So, hello once again, and welcome to the Baptist Messenger channel. Uh, today we're going to be covering a topic that is, is very difficult for some people, and, and I've struggled a little bit with how to talk about it myself, and that's the church. You know, we covered it a little bit under the Baptist distinctives, under the autonomous local church, but I want to try to clarify and help people understand how they can tell if they're attending one of God's churches, right? Because the church is a physical, local, called out body of believers, right? You assemble together at a location that you call your church, but when you assemble together as the church, you are the church, right? Here in India, there may be areas where you can't safely call a building itself the church, but when you come together as a congregation, you are the church. So, to start with, what does church mean, right? I already gave you one definition, but let's look at another definition. According to Noah Webster, uh, it's a house consecrated to the worship of God among Christians, the Lord's house. This seems to be the original meaning of the word. The Greek to call out or call together denotes an assembly or collection. But Lord, a term applied by the early Christians to Jesus Christ and the house in which they worshiped, was named from the title, right? So Noah Webster saying church gets its name from its connection to Christ and the local body called out by the Lord, right? And that seems to be the history of the word and where we get the word church from. So let's now look at what the Bible says, right? Normally we would first go to the Bible and when we go to the Bible we would go to the first mention of the word first. But in this case, there's an application of the words which implies a meaning from a er time earlier than the first mention. Uh, the first mention is in Matthew 16, 18, uh, in Jesus' discussion with Peter, and we'll talk about that later. But if you read in Acts, there's a much older connection. Acts chapter 7, verse 37 and 38 says, This is, is that Moses which said, Unto the children of Israel a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren. Like unto me, him shall ye hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. You see there it says, that was in the church in the wilderness. So Moses had a physically assembled congregation unto the Lord, Correct. To continue to be a congregation of God were they, were they not given rules by which they were to operate, right? A church has organization, it has rules. In Exodus chapter 16, verse 4, it says, Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them where they will walk in my law or no. So, God proves his church to see if they're going to walk in under his law, under his rules. But many today say it is a church just because we say church and we mention God or Jesus. But would God see that as a church? What does he see as a church? We see here from Acts in the Old Testament, it is a congregation following him. So what are we supposed to follow now to have a true church? First, let's look at the foundation, right? Because we, we need to have the proper foundation. That's part of the order, right? So the foundation, Matthew chapter 16 Verses 15 through 18 says, He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The foundation of the church is the rock of Jesus Christ. Here Christ is saying, Peter, you are a small rock, and everything 
will be built on what you just said. The very gates of hell cannot stop the church. Luke chapter 6 speaks of, of a house built on a bad foundation and one on a rock foundation, right? You either build on God's foundation or you don't. This representing the rock Jesus Christ is your foundation. 1 Corinthians puts it this way. 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 12 says, According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man that take heed how he buildeth there, thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble. Right? It's saying, this is the foundation, and you can build on it correctly or incorrectly. But anything you build incorrectly will be burned away, is what it goes on to say. Wood, hay, and stubble will be burned away. So a church must be built on Christ and in Christ. I think most churches that claim to be a church do this, but they fail because they only see Christ as their Savior. They don't have a true picture of Christ. But Christ is more than that. According to John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but he was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh in the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and, he received, they, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory and the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So Christ is so much more than only our Savior. He is the word, the light, God, creator, and Savior that makes us the children of God. For the purpose of the church, I will concentrate on the word. Because this is the key. Christ, who is to be the foundation of the church, is the word of God. So if your church doesn't believe the Word of God, it is not a church. Many big-time pastors are not even truly in a church because it is not a believing church. If somebody can predict their own death and resurrection, I'm not a, This is a quote from one of those people. If somebody can predict their own death and resurrection, I'm not all that concerned about how they got into the world. Christianity does not hinge on the truth or even the stories around the birth of Jesus, it hinges on the resurrection of Jesus. Pastor Andy, Andy Stanley. Pastor Andy Stanley is not in a church. Because the church has to believe every word of the word of God. Which says how Jesus was born. Not just how he was resurrected and how he was crucified. So a pastor of one of the biggest churches in Georgia doesn't believe the word of God. And therefore he's not pastoring a church because he's not building it. On the word of God. So if Christ is the word and he is our foundation, what else does the Bible say about a church? A church is, is good and in order and it has a system of discipline. The church keep, keeps order by following biblical doctrine. If you have questions on this, please watch my other videos on the Baptist distinctives. But the Bible gives us this information because God wants an orderly church. Paul said when writing Corinth, let all things be done decently in order. So in the church, you should be doing things decently and in order. And Jesus gave us a system of discipline to keep order in the church in Matthew 18. Matthew 18, starting in verse 15 through 20 says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with him one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. 
Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosened in heaven. And again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for, for them by the Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So this isn't talking just like about prayer and stuff. This is talking about keeping order in the church, gathering together for the sake of keeping order in the church. And that if you do this and they refuse to accept the word of God, that you are to treat them as a non-believer. They may still be a believer. They may go to heaven. But you are to treat them as a non-believer. You are to witness to them. You are to love them. But not treat them as a brother or sister in Christ, but treat them as a non-believer. To try to regain them to the church. The church is a physical location. After all, many of the books of the Bible are written to physical churches in physical locations. So why would you think the church wasn't a physical location? The Bible says in Acts chapter 8 verse 1, And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Acts 14.23 says, And when they had ordained them elders in every church, and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. And Acts 14.27 says, And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them, and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. Romans 16.5 says, Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Epaphrodus, who is in the fruit, first fruits of Achaia, unto Christ. At these physical locations, the church had two ordinances and two offices. The ordinances are baptism and the Lord's Supper, and the offices are pastors and deacons. For more information on this, see my videos on the Baptist distinctives. They will help you understand these parts of the church. The church, however, is not the same thing as the family of God. I want to clear this up, right? A church is good in order. It's in a local, it's a local place, right? You meet in a local place. You gather together as a body locally. It's good and in order. It follows the word of God. But it's not the same thing as the family of God. Being a member of the church is not the same thing as being a member of the family. A church is a called out local assembly of believers. But the family is not the same thing. The family of God, you are automatically part of the family when you're saved. Right? And it covers that in Romans chapter 8. That you are sons of God. Whereby you cry, Abba, Father. In Acts chapter 2 verse 40 through 47, it talks about the church. And it says, And with many others did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about three thousand souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and prayers. See, they gather together, right, to learn doctrine, fellowship, eat, those things in the church. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and they had all things common. And they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So there they were getting saved and doing these things being added onto the church, right? They were added onto the church because they were saved and baptized on, by that church. Not just because they were saved. Being saved, they were added to the family of God, right? As we were talked about in John chapter 1, right? They were made sons of God. So they followed the biblical system and added to the church daily in a godly, ordered way. Then as a church, they continued to meet as the Bible commands, right? In Hebrews 10.25, it says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another in so much the more as you see the day approaching. You see, even in that time, they realized there were people that tried to claim that I don't need to go to church. No, that you have to. You are asked to assemble together, to assemble yourselves. You need to go to church. So I hope you have found a good biblical local assembly to be a member of. 
But if not, contact me, that I may help you. And speaking of those local bodies, if you know of one that needs prayer in this time of persecution, let us know. I ask that after this video, you're done watching this video, take some time and, and, and pray for churches that need help. Pray for Solid Rock Baptist Church in New Jersey. They're being persecuted in the United States too. They have a court case that they need your prayers for. As Christians, let us assemble ourselves together to pray for one another. Let us assemble in the local church. Now let us close in prayer. Dear Lord, we just thank you for giving us the church. Lord, we ask that you would just watch over your churches here in India. Watch over your churches in America. Lord, I lift up Solid Rock Baptist and the other churches that are being attacked in America for wanting to meet as you ask us to do in Hebrews 10.25. Lord, please just protect these churches and bless these churches. Lord, please just help us here in India to gather together, be that local assembly for you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.